Welcome to this community newspaper Facebook program, Excellence in Education. This is Marta Perez, and our mission is to expose and inspire excellence in education. Please follow us on Facebook and send questions via our chat room. Our program is so privileged to have an important guest who exemplifies excellence in post-secondary education. He is the president of Florida International University, Dr. Mark Rosenberg. Florida International University, or FIU, is an integral part of the engine of success in Miami-Dade County. It is our public university founded 52 years ago. FIU is the largest university in South Florida, the second largest in Florida, and the fourth largest in the United States. The university is classified by Carnegie in the top tier R1 doctoral universities, very high research activity. FIU has 11 separate colleges and more than 40 centers, offers more than 190 programs of study, including centers in Asia and Europe. This year, US News and World Report ranked Florida International University as the 78th best public universities in the United States, jumping up 17 spots from last year when it was number 95. Just three days ago, its law school ranked number one in the top performing law schools in Florida in passing the bar. And the man behind this success is our guest today, Dr. Ro Dr. Mark Rosenberg. He is the fifth president of FIU, has been since 2009, with so many distinctions that we could be here all day if I tried to enumerate all of them. But I'll tell you a little, few things. He holds a PhD in political science. He came to FIU in 1976 as a professor and distinguished himself very quickly, founding the FIU Latin American and Caribbean Center, a premier research center today, co-authoring many books and articles, considered an expert in Hispanic studies and geopolitics, while always giving back to the community in many ways. And of late, he and his wife, Rosalie, donated $1 million to FIU for first-generation scholarships. The Rosenberg gift is the largest ever made by an FIU president to the university. Under his leadership, Dr. Rosenberg has increased enrollment to almost 59,000 students and improved graduation rates <clears throat> by more than 15%. He has improved every aspect of the university, budget, graduation, retention rates, internships, science, technology, engineering, math programs, on and on. My words cannot do justice to this very accomplished man. We are so fortunate to have a man of such talent, social and spiritual conscience in this community. So please welcome the man, the myth, the <laughs> legend, president of FIU, Dr. Mark Rosenberg. Welcome, Dr. Dr. Perez, thank you. That was uh, far too <laughs> far too elaborate and uh, uh, I will say exaggerated because I respect you too much, but uh, but I appreciate that. There's a lot going on in our community. There's a lot going on at FIU and I got great people that I work with and and most of all, I love our students. You know, I've had a, a an amazing uh, and but working with our students has been the most magnificent part about it. Our students, mm -hmm. the characteristic that most I admire, Dr. Perez, is, is their determination to succeed. And I, I've never found more determined students than right here in the 305. So I'm blessed oh. in my mind. So you are so inspirational to your students and to all the community. Tell us about your background and how you grow, grew up. I, I think that there, uh, you know, we all have different backgrounds. I, I come from, I'm a first generation college graduate in, in our family. Uh, my father is an immigrant, was an immigrant with his, uh, 
born in the United States, but came from immigrant parents. Uh, my mother is a survivor of Auschwitz, and my father was a U.S. Army captain and basically liberated her from a slave labor camp and a displaced persons camp in, uh, in, in, in Western Europe really? at, at the, near the end of the war. Uh, they met. He eventually brought her over. Her fa entire family was, uh, was, 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 was murdered, you know, in Your Auschwitz. My mother was not born in the United States. My mother was not born in the U.S., and uh, she's Polish and uh, from mm -hmm. Sosnowitz. And uh, but her entire family was decimated at Auschwitz. And um, so I come out really uh, come out of an immigration immigrant family and in many ways, I'm very much aligned with the experience of this of this community. Where, where were you born? Dr. I was born in a in a small town called Athens, Ohio, southeastern Ohio, oh, which is actually a university town, uh, Ohio U. And uh, but we were townies and I was uh, raised always looking at the university and looking into it, but not really being a part of it. And and how many siblings did you uh, have? Three. I have a brother and uh, two sisters. I'm the second of four. Uh, my my older sister, we used to call her straight A. Her name is Brinthia. <laughs> we used to call her straight A Brinthia. So I was always, you know, if, if you will, <laughs> number two or number three in the family of kids. Never could do quite approximate her accomplishments Um uh, she's a brilliant, uh, what brilliant is she lady. Doing now? Well, now she's, uh, she's retired. She was, a uh, the principal fundraiser, uh, and vice president for Cleveland state university. Oh my goodness. Yes. So many of, uh, <laughs> people in Miami, uh, and, and universities and, and are from Ohio. I yes. mean, it's a, a yes. credit to the state credit. Yes. To the state. Well, Ohio, unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of, of a lot of people who migrate out of Ohio because, the opportunities aren't as robust as they are uh, in other states, particularly Florida. But in my case and my family's case, we always loved Florida. We always wanted to be in Florida. And when I got a job at FIU in 1976, I felt I had died and gone to heaven. Uh -huh. And in many ways, I still feel that way about being at FIU, even though, as you know, FIU has dramatically changed since, oh since uh, the mid-70s. Yes, Absol absolutely. And how did you... Come, how did you get to come here? How was that? What was that process? The job market in, uh, I got a PhD, mm -hmm. University of Pittsburgh. The job market in uh, 1976 was, uh, was very, there were, there were no uh, jobs for academics, uh, in part because of the wind down of the Vietnam War and uh, the kind of the college bubble was over. Uh, and, but I lucked out. I got an interview at FIU. And um, I got offered the job. There were 400 applicants for two jobs in political science, and I, <laughs> I, I lucked out, and, 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 uh, and I, who, I won the lottery by getting the who job. Who hired you? Uh, Department of Political Science, mm -hmm. and uh, the gentleman who hired me actually was uh, a gentleman whose name was Ricardo Arias Calderon. Ricardo was the dean of arts and sciences, and Ricardo subsequently became the vice president of Panama. Oh, so my I, goodness. So you know, Miami then was <laughs> was even then was still you know, very, very political. And FIU had a number of Panamanian uh, uh, leaders in exile, but Ricardo, as a Panamanian leader, was also an academic. Wow. And he had risen to become dean. So Ricardo hired me, and uh, 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 I miss him very much. You know, he he was very successful late, later in Panamanian, in the Panamanian political system. And, and when you came, you were married and had yes, children? Yes, yes. Rosalie... Uh, mm -hmm. I married Rosalie, a college sweetheart, and uh, we're we're married uh, today, which is awesome. Uh, she's, she's put up <laughs> with rare. me. Can you imagine? I mean, she's put up with me, and she's really, really helped me and um, to get the things done I needed to get done. We have two kids, both graduates of FIU, and um, one a grad as well, a graduate of the FIU College of Law. So we're blessed. My daughter is getting a a, a doctoral degree in curriculum uh -huh. and. Uh, has been a teacher in uh, in the in the public schools. Oh. I think teaching really is a noble, is, and I'm sure, I know that's why you're so dedicated to uh, the Miami Dade County Public Schools. Teaching is a noble profession, and I admire those teachers, particularly in K through 12. And my daughter, absolutely, one of them. absolutely. Well, good. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you for yeah. sharing her with us. You know, it was a tall order uh, for FIU to hire you.
because there were big shoes. Modesto yes. Maidik yes. had been a stellar yes. president. Yes. But the hiring committee yes. was set on you. They wanted you. Why are you so successful? <laughs> because you have done amazing work. How are you so successful? What is your Well, I, I think that first of all, I did, uh, you know, I did work for Dr. Medik. I was a provost and a dean and a director. And I certainly got good training and great mentoring from Dr. Medik. So, uh, and then when I started, uh, he and the, the provost, Ron Berkman, had left the university in very good shape. So I, I was lucky, even though it was, as you know, the recession. And uh, But they had done a superb job of uh, setting priorities and cutting budgets. So that's one. Two is that um, I, uh, I, I have a work ethic. I love, I love my work. I'm very passionate about my work. Uh, I, I have a work ethic that uh, maybe comes out of the uh, immigrant circumstances of our family. And um, I, I am very disciplined about uh, my work. And um, I have, I have, we have great people around us. We have a really dynamic board. And truthfully, uh, even though there have been a lot of political ups and downs in the state in higher education, every time there are ups, they get higher. And um, the state now is fully committed to quality education and to quality learning. And uh, the legislature has, we've been lucky, they've invested in, in FIU. So I, I think a lot of things came together, but I think that, you know, I, 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 we're here to get things done and I, I want to leave things better than I found them. I think that's very important. That's, that's, I think a lot of us are here in Miami for that reason. So, are very honorable. Yeah. But I find as a leader, one of the hardest things is working with people. <laughs> and, and, and of course, you have so many constituents. You have yeah. to work with the legislature yes. and sometimes you yes. know as, this, as as do we at the school district that is tough and then you also have to work with the people that help you get your job done right and you know how what is your philosophy about working with people people under you right and people that you have to go to and and ask for favors or ask for blessings or well, I, 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 first of all, I'm an, I'm an academic, I'm trained as an academic and, and in many ways you are as well. And, um, I've, I've, I've been trained to believe that, uh, data and logical and deductive reasoning are always best. I, I've learned along the way, however, <laughs> that, that, uh, it's not essentially reason that drives emotion, but for the most part it's emotion that drives reason. Mm -hmm. And so that's one. Two is I believe in respect. I think you got to, if you want respect, you got to give respect. I think that's, that's so important. And I, you know, I probably learned that from my family. Uh, third, um, that you got to meet people where they're at. Uh, I was, my father, uh, didn't, did, who didn't get a college degree, uh, had a scrapyard, a junkyard, and we bought scrap. Uh, we bought scrap from uh, industry. We bought scrap from peddlers. We bought scrap from uh, I itinerants uh, who were just, you know, salvaging to make to eke out a living. So I had the opportunity as a as a as a kid to to work with people from all walks of life, and to be able to learn how to communicate with them. And so um, I was very lucky. And um, I have, uh, I guess I have that ability to take people, deal with them where they are and try to work with them on their terms and not necessarily, I don't, I don't try to impose, I try to work with. I think collaboration is best. But, but the respect issue, I think, is the most important. And there's a golden rule, as you know, tre you treat people as you want to be treated. And uh, then the final thing I would say is I remember what Maya Angelou, you know, said. Maya Angelou, the, the great poet laureate, made the point that people may never remember what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. That's right. Yes. And that is, for me, <laughs> that's an iron driver of so, my behavior. So respect and all of these good things that you've just said. Mm -hmm. But... It's also very political. 
<laughs> and Dr. Rosenberg, <laughs> when you see, and, and I know your work is very political because yeah. it's run by, you know, the, 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 the funding, the state. So when you hear someone say something that is very political and not necessarily something that you respect, well, how, <clears throat> how do you get you're in right. the right mindset? That's an awesome question, and I think that there's always a balance. First of all, I mean, most of us as university, public university presidents are caught, always caught in a crossfire and walking uh, across a minefield uh, always, and the ice is very thin. Um, I, part of it is that I love this community, and I've, I think I've learned how to move uh, around in the community um, showing respect, not necessarily agreeing, but not going out of my way to disagree when it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, you know, one of the lessons I learned in Tallahassee, I served as chancellor there for three years of the state university system. I was reminded initially of five words. Uh, it is not my issue. So pick your <laughs> issues. You know, I, I, I found a way to pick my issues and to stay on them and to stay focused. And so uh, there's that issue. Thirdly, there are times when you have to disagree, and if you can disagree respectfully and um, without going out of your way to be antagonistic or, uh, per, you know, directing your, your concerns, concerns personally, I found this community has been very reasonable. And this community as well does not like hypocrisy, as you know. You can't be a hypocrite in, in, in 305. You can't say one thing and do another. And I've tried to be very consistent in what I have done say. and align my, my deeds with my, 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 my act, my words with my deeds. And, so, and that's been, hard. And that's hard. And, as you know. But you've been so successful. So. <laughs> it's hard. I know it's hard. It's hard. Who, who is your hero? Well, my, well, my, first of all, my parents are, there's no question. Uh, my father who, uh, um, found ways uh, to give comfort to people was never about my dad. Uh, he was, uh, he was quite a, 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 a positive human being. And my mother who transcended all of the horror uh, of the concentration camps and slave labor and the, and the murders of her family members to live a life without uh, bitter, being driven by bitterness and anger. And that's, what a, what that's a remarkable very that, uh, woman. Very difficult. Very, very difficult. difficult. Yes. So sir. really, my parents are my are my heroes. Very, very amazing, and and obviously, you're the product of of amazing um, people. Yeah. My Actually. father. The other part is interesting is that, uh, and particularly in this day and age, so there here they were fighting World War II, and my dad was a company commander of all black troops, a segregated really? a segregated oh, really? company. He and he was a white captain, and and he had two white lieutenants, and everybody else was was black, and it was I mean, it was segregated. And uh, there they were, uh, you know, managing wow. in World War II, fighting for the freedom, you know, of peoples. But yet, it was a segregated exercise. So that, of course, was very humbling for my father, and really set a text for how he was going to raise his three, his four kids. Wow, Dr. Yeah. Rosenberg, I ever thought of you have so many stories. <laughs> I Ever do. thought of writing a book about uh, your life? I well, not about my life, but I mean travels along the way. There's a there's a really fascinating book that I I might do as a model of incidents of travel in Yucatan, Chiapas, uh, <laughs> and Central America by John Lloyd Stevens, and and it's an awesome book mm -hmm. detailing kind of what he encountered in the 1840s as he moved through the region. And I've often thought that might be a model for. The encounters, because you know, I—I I mean, I spent a lot of time in Central America. Yes. I drove through Central America three times. Uh, lived in throughout the region in the '70s, in the '80s. What a tremendous changes that were going on there, and uh, was involved in some and, of them. So uh, there's there's some stories to be told. Yes, Hopefully and I'll and, and what do. a gamut of human experiences yes. you have from your parents to growing up where you did, to growing, going down to uh, South America, to now here, where this is uh, a most unusual part of the United States. It is. Uh, uh, to, say, to say the least. What has been your largest 
challenge in life and in your career would you say? Well, at, at a at a it professional a, level, anything you would change. <laughs> well, I you know I I feel that going through life, one should try to minimize regrets. So I I've I've tried to to get out there and do the things that I felt were important. The biggest challenge professionally is I feel managing expectations in the leadership role that I have. I want people to have high expectations for higher ed. I want people to have high expectations for our university, for our students, for our graduates, and what what we can do in the university. And at the at the at the, probably at the personal level, uh, my wife has has been ill, and you know managing through those those challenges that don't have any solutions, uh, and trying to figure out day to day strategies to you know, improve her quality of life in a circumstance where that's probably not doable uh, is, uh, you know, is the day-to-day -day drama that we all have that. We all have that uh, uh, one way or the other, but that's at, at the personal level uh, what's, uh, what, what's uh, uppermost. Wow. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're doing a fabulous uh, job and, mm, thank you. and we are so fortunate to have you at Miami you. Dade. If, if you had a magic wand, for education only, what would you change, and what would you want that magic wand to do? Uh, I I would like to have see greater access for eligible students. What I've seen it in working with our students at FIU is you just give them a chance and they 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 fly. I'm really happy with uh, mm -hmm. with how the Miami Dade County Public Schools has improved. I've seen it over 40 years. The the quality of the students that we're getting is 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 really very very good, but as you know, there are still a lot of students who are left behind, and who want to learn and who want to learn. And so, I'd like to find ways to build better access for those students. You know, the university is a very much a traditional uh, educational institution. We we have uh, people who got to come to the university. We we have a set time and place for the education. Those, all that's that's changing now, and I'd like to find ways to make it easier for individuals where they are to get educations that can help them to ensure the prosperity of their families and their communities. So I guess in that regard, raising raising the opportunity levels and closing the gaps would be what I would. And we've tried to do that at FIU, by the way, and and. We are ranked very highly for the social mobility opportunities that we provide. Mm -hmm. But honestly, it's not enough. It, in this country, uh, 2% of homeless, only 2% of homeless and uh, only 2% of homeless kids get a college education. How could that be in this country? Can't we do better than that? And so I'd like to be, I'd like to see that, you know, just to close those gaps, raise the bar, raise the level and close the gaps in the process. Yes. That would, that is, <laughs> not, that, it's not, it's not, not that's too much. Not, that's a lot, but it, it certainly is a, a, a very great lofty goals. How do we crack that difficulty with math and engineering programs with students? Because I know that those programs are so important to FIU. Yes. Oh, yes. And I know that students go in and say, yeah, I want to be an engineer until they start to see what some of the requirements are that they are not able to grasp how do you have any thoughts on that i don't oh, I, yeah. I, I, some oh of, yeah yes well that i mean first of all uh the attrition is horrible it's at least 50 percent of the kids who want to go into the stem area science technology engineering math don't end up there okay and that's 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 not good that's one two is that um we've got to do a j better job at changing mindset mindset of faculty mindset of students because we found that if we convince students that everybody has the potential to excel uh, in math. And we find, and we do a better, a more systematic analysis of what the roadblocks are, uh, which we've done at FIU. We've raised a pass rate uh, in math courses at FIU from 30% on the first try to now 75%. Oh my goodness, yeah. that's, wonder that's it, it, music, music. It, it, it's amazing <laughs> because what we did is we sat down and we, 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 we examined what the roadblocks were. And we know that the first roadblock is the mindset of the faculty themselves about empowering students to learn. 
Now, everybody learns differently. And so we've got to do better at understanding how our students learn and what the best ways are to help them foster their learning. In the old days, it was one size would fit all. Now we're getting much more sophisticated, understanding learning styles, uh, using more hands-on techniques to foster greater awareness of math and physics principles, for instance, and we're seeing very dramatic success. And we're also doing a better job of studying what works doing the research on what works and then trying to replicate that. And then finally, uh, at FIU, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great fact. We have the largest number of student learning assistants in the country. Great. Students themselves who are capable and competent in oh, math wow. and in engineering, and they help to That's teach their fellow program. students. That's fabulous. Yes. We're almost out of time. And I have so many more questions, <laughs> but I have two questions. Okay. Number one, what is your favorite meal? Oh wow, uh, I'm a, okay. So I'm a, like I'm I'm from the Midwest, you know. If I could get a good piece of red meat and uh, you know some great vegetables and fresh lettuce, I am home. Uh, okay. okay. And number two, how do you relax? Oh wow. <laughs> well, I I, I got to say that you know uh, with my family, I get great joy out of my son and my daughter, and they're very supportive with my wife, of course. And uh, 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 I like to exercise. I like to swim. I like to be in the in the gym. Uh, I'm teaching myself how to jump rope now. Oh, great. I've never <laughs> been able to jump rope. If anybody can help me, I would be very appreciative. But I set little goals like that, you know, things I haven't been able to do and I try to do. And it gets my mind to focus and sh to that's, shift. That's great. Can you jump rope? Yes, but I used to do it so much better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't jump rope very well anymore. But yes, it's 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 it was so much fun as a child that yes. uh, little girls jump rope more than little boys. But I sure did. <laughs> right. But Dr. Right. Rosenberg, thank you so much thank for being you. here. You, the it. time has flown, and I want to know if you would like to say anything as you as we yes. finish the program. Well, thank you. I I just want to say that I feel. Uh, I feel blessed to be able to live in Miami-Dade County, a community that's rapidly growing, have uh, uh, hundreds of, of friends that I'm, I may not deserve, but that I have and that I, that I really appreciate. And I got a, I got a great place to work at. I got meaningful work, purpose-driven life. I'm blessed. So just, I want people to understand that and uh, I don't take it for granted. Uh, and I really appreciate this opportunity to share with the public uh, some things that are going on. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for staying tuned and listening to this fine program with Dr. Rosenberg, and please join us again for Excellence in Education.